path. The second demo is for remote schema permissions. And this is a huge feature where you can kind of have the Hasra authorization system for remote schemas as well. So if you're using remote schemas, you would know that there isn't any uh, role-based remote schemas or you don't kind of use any XSRA session variables and so on to do authorization over your remote schemas. They are all exposed to all the fields of your remote schemas and all the arguments and so on and so forth. Everything is kind of exposed uh, at the top level. So we'll see kind of like how you can start enforcing permissions on your remote schemas as well. So here I have again my Docker Compose file. This is different PR and you see, you can stop this actually. And let me start this application now. Cool, so that is running. And this also has some initialization uh, data. So I have a users table here and it has one row. Uh, so user has a name and an email and so on. So I'm just going to populate that. Use PSQL for this and in it dot code. Right. Uh, so if I come back, uh, I'll, I have a console running locally here. To, I guess. Right. So uh, I can see my users table here, just going to track that. And sure, I can query and so on. But what I want to do uh, in my application is kind of get their auth zero profile also along with the users. And we know that uh, you could do this using uh, remote relationships. So I'm just going to use that and first add a remote schema and then I'll create a remote relationship. So let's call this auth zero schema. Let's add the URL for the remote schema and add the remote schema. Cool, so if I come here, uh, I can query for users, ID, name, and email, but I don't have a, a auth zero profile yet because I didn't create a remote relationship. Quickly go and create that from the relationships page. Let's call this auth zero profile. And I can say, join the email, argument of the remote field with the email column of my table. And now I would be able to see on zero profile field and I can say created at last login, user ID, so on. This is cool. Uh, we haven't, uh, we didn't need any uh, extra permission layer over uh, our remote schemas to kind of get uh, kind of join the authorized users in the table with the remote schema. But what we are, what we also can do, if we see today what happens, is that the top level field which is exposed in the remote schema is also available for querying. So I could as well say email, and I could say the at hasura.io, and get the same things here. Uh, last login and user ID, this is fine. But suppose I knew some other user, right? So then my G at hasra.io, I could kind of get their information also from the remote schema, just by giving, just by passing this argument. So what I need to do uh, so that I only get my information is kind of hide this field altogether and get the auth zero profile only through the remote relationship. And to do that, we will now start adding permissions to our remote schema and introducing remote schema permissions, which is shown in the console in the remote schema page as the permissions tab. The UI is minimal, it's work in progress. Uh, we have prepared something minimal for this uh, community call, it will change, but this will get the idea across. So as usual, I'll create a new role. Admin has all the permissions. And if I start creating, if I edit, uh, the permission for this role, I see a GraphQL editor, right? So th what this means is that you could basically give any schema 
of your which is like a subset or which is like kind of like a slightly transformed version of your uh, actual remote schema so that it fits the the role permission uh, that you want to get that you want to expose to the to the end user right for example if i had the remote schema and the remote schema is basically uh, i hosted it here on glitch so we'll see what the remote schema is it's a very simple remote schema uh, this is basically the definition we can see that it has just a hello field and an auth zero field which is what we used but what i'm going to do is hide the auth zero field from the top level for the user role so i can just type query and say i only want to give hello string and nothing else right so this is kind of like a subset of this schema and you could say that for that role uh, the user role the only schema that is available is just the hello field under query root right and i can save this permission and if i come back to my graphical and try to run this query it will run because i have not added a role so let me just add the role as user and if i run it again i would see that all zero field is no longer present right but if i kind of run the first query which had the remote relationship inside uh, the users field i would not see that because i have not added users permission on this table so let quickly go and set that uh, without any checks to all the same and if i run this now i i get my data as user role i also get my auth zero profile uh, but i cannot get any other auth zero profile by going directly to the remote schema so this is one very important use case where you want to kind of just uh, show join data which is already authorized by your table level authorization and uh, it kind of uh, lets you kind of use the remote schema only uh, only for the things that you want to kind of expose in your api uh, the second thing that we can also see here is suppose i want to expose the remote schema but for a different use case uh, i want to kind of have hasura as a graphql gateway i want to bring in a lot of remote sources uh, and i don't really have remote joins but i want to kind of enforce some constraints like uh, if i have say a user id then you can only get the user id from your remote source as well so to show that uh, as an example i will create a role called uh, odd zero now and what i'm going to do is copy this schema here and i'm going to modify that and the way that i'm going to do that is kind of restrict the arguments that you can kind of expose in the graph so i'm going to remove odd zero id completely so that the odd zero role can only query via email and the second thing that i want to also do is i want to set a preset for this and the preset is basically coming from a session variable so you can say accessor user id right so this is kind of the graph that we want to expose to the auth0 uh, role you have uh, the auth0 field with fewer uh, arguments and also the email field has a preset which is accessor user id right uh, to make it more semantically meaningful let's call it accessor email right and the rest of the graph is here you could kind of hide the the fields from this type if you wanted if you didn't want to show kind of like uh, the picture or something you could do that as well so we have created the auth0 role now and if i just change this to auth0 role and start querying again i can see odd zero but i won't see any so i can't see any arguments here for example if i open export uh explorer i can't see any arguments that i can give here that's because there was only one argument called email and that also has been preset and let me just get the usual things user id email id uh last login and so on and if i run this this would throw an error uh, which is saying that accessor email was expected so let me just skip that
And now you can see that without even providing any argument, uh, we are getting the data just for uh, the accessory email that is coming from the session variables. So this is the second powerful uh, 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 part of remote schema permissions. The first thing was that you could kind of hide all the fields and only show a subset of the remote schema graph. And the second part is that you can add constraints uh, via presets uh, like accessory, which can use accessory variables, which can use static values and so on. It can have complicated input object types where some fields of the input object type are kind of preset, some other fields are not. So you can query it from the, uh, from the client, uh, but at runtime, the other, in, other fields would be injected with the session variable and so on. So that's, uh, that's basically remote schema permissions allows you uh, to kind of add lots of, lots of remote schemas and then do role-based schemas on that. Uh, yes, so this was the demo. Uh, 